Welcome to the Bite Size webinar on planning for effective use of pupil equity funding. Pupil equity funding, or PEF, was introduced as part of the Scottish Attainment Challenge to support schools to close the poverty-related attainment gap. By the end of school year 2021-2022, over £115 million of PEF will have been allocated to schools across the sea and over £614 million to schools across Scotland. This makes PEF a very valuable resource and a very significant investment in closing the poverty-related attainment gap. PEF can help mitigate the educational inequalities arising from poverty, which we know have been exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on the work of schools. This means it's more important than ever that PEF is used effectively so that all learners can achieve success, irrespective of their background or where they live. This webinar is to support head teachers and senior leaders with responsibility for PEF planning, particularly those new to this role, to ensure PEF is used to maximise progress in closing the gap. Sources of support for schools in relation to PEF include the following documents. PEF National Operational Guidance, issued by the Scottish Government each year. Complementary guidance from your local authority and the Scottish Attainment Challenge self-evaluation resource, which provides features of effective practice and challenge questions in relation to effective use of PEF. The National Improvement Hub is a further source of support, and schools unfamiliar with any of these sources of advice and guidance may find it helpful to familiarise themselves with them ahead of any further PEF planning discussions. When planning for PEF, it's helpful to work through these five stages. Stage one, undertake a robust contextual analysis to identify the pupils in your school most affected by poverty, the barriers they face, and the poverty-related attainment gaps. The gaps and barriers identified will provide the rationale for your PEF plan. Stage two is to identify the outcomes for your plan. Outcomes are the statements that set out the change you want to make happen. They articulate the improvement you want to see. For each outcome, a set of measures is required. Measures are the information, the data to be gathered to allow you to measure the impact of your work and determine whether or not the outcome has been achieved. The next stage is to identify the targeted approach or intervention that will achieve the outcome and then plan for its implementation. The approach or intervention should be additional to those that would already be happening. Once the intervention begins, the impact should be regularly reviewed using data from the measures and decisions made regarding next steps. PEF plans should focus on ensuring equity to bring about improvements in literacy, numeracy and health and wellbeing for pupils affected by poverty. Keeping this at the forefront of all PEF planning discussions, maintaining a relentless focus on closing the poverty-related attainment gap will help avoid mission creep and the use of PEF in ways that do not contribute to improving the educational outcomes of pupils affected by poverty. Today's presentation aims to build your skills and confidence in planning for PEF at each of these five stages. A contextual analysis requires robust data to ensure the planning decisions that stem from it are targeted correctly. It's helpful, therefore, to think about data under the following headings. Demographics. The descriptive information about the school and its community, such as levels of poverty and vulnerability, free school meals uptake, care experience, additional support needs, attendance and exclusion. Perception data helps us understand what staff, pupils, parents and partners think about the school and its work and can also provide insight into the impact of poverty and the barriers faced by pupils and their families. School processes refers to the inputs that impact learning and includes pedagogical approaches, the delivery of learning, teaching and assessment and tracking and monitoring processes. Pupil learning is the outputs. The impact for pupils. This includes information on attendance, exclusion, engagement, well-being, 
attainment, participation and achievement. Including this wide range of data and intersecting it provides that really robust analysis and understanding of your school's context and avoids the error of making decisions based on inaccurate assumptions. Instead, the rationale for your use of PEF will have a strong evidence base. Analysing your data this way will ensure you accurately identify the pupils in your school most affected by poverty, the barriers they face linked to that poverty and the attainment gaps arising from these. When engaging with data to identify gaps and barriers, schools should focus on pupils in receipt of free school meals and may also include other groups of pupils affected by poverty, such as pupils living in SIMD deciles 1 and 2, not in receipt of free school meals. When analysing data, particular things to look out for are trends over a three to five year period, the rate at which data is increasing or decreasing, ceilings on data, and recurring themes. For example, numeracy attainment being consistently low at all levels for pupils in receipt of free school meals. To quantify the poverty related gaps, comparisons should be made with pupils least affected by poverty. For example, data for those in receipt of free school meals compared to the data for pupils not in receipt of free school meals. Data for pupils living in SIMD deciles 1 and 2 compared to the data for pupils living in SIMD deciles 9 and 10. Schools should also compare the data for their pupils most affected by poverty to the local and national data for that same group. As gaps emerge, schools should consider the underlying barriers. The examples of barriers shown here demonstrate that barriers are not exclusively found in families, at home and in the community. Schools can also be a source of barriers. Whatever the underlying barrier, it should shape the PEF outcome and the intervention or approach to ensure an appropriately targeted response. There is no one size fits all. For example, the approach taken to address low attainment caused by mental health issues impacting negatively on attendance will be very different to the approach taken to address low attainment stemming from limited cultural capital. PEF is about delivering targeted approaches and interventions that effectively tackle the barriers, the root causes, to address the symptoms. In this context, the poverty-related attainment gaps, bringing about sustainable improvements. Moving on to think about outcomes, a further reminder that these should link to the overarching aim of closing the poverty-related attainment gap. A good outcome is specific, timed, aligned and numeric, or STAN for short. That is to say, it will identify what is to change, for whom, by how much and by when. Including all of this detail in the outcome makes it much easier to monitor the impact and measure whether or not the outcome has been achieved. It's important that the language used in the outcome is unambiguous. Providing an operational definition of potentially ambiguous words, such as engagement, is a helpful way of avoiding ambiguity. This is an example of an outcome that lacks a sufficient level of detail and it will be difficult to determine whether or not this outcome has been successfully achieved as a result. For example, how much of an increase does the school consider a successful outcome? What level of increased engagement does the school hope to achieve? What is meant by engagement? Is there consistency across the team in their understanding of what is meant by engagement? Or does engagement mean different things to different people? There is a risk of ambiguity when using this term without an operational definition. The outcome doesn't identify the target pupils. Whose engagement is the school seeking to increase? And finally, when is the outcome to be achieved by? December or June? To measure success, there needs to be a clear time frame. The outcome in this slide, on the other hand, provides sufficient detail, clearly identifying what, for whom, by how much, 
and by when. This is a good outcome statement. The National Operational Guidance makes clear the expectation that schools will have plans in place at the outset to monitor progress and measure impact. When thinking about what these measures will be, it is helpful to think about what data from before, during and after the intervention will allow the school to identify whether or not improvement is taking place. Having a baseline, for example in relation to attendance, allows the amount of progress to be measured more easily. Measures might include some of the data shown here. They may include a mix of qualitative and quantitative data, perceptions and pupil learning data. Give consideration to how often data will be gathered and when. It is a careful balance of leaving an appropriate amount of time to allow improvement to take place, while not waiting too long only to discover the intervention is not working and needs to be reviewed, losing valuable time and resources. Try to keep the gathering of data manageable and streamline it with existing tracking and monitoring wherever possible. Make sure those responsible for the gathering and analysis of measures understand their role and the importance of gathering the data in line with the PEF plan. The answers to all of the questions on this slide will be specific to the identified outcome. To allow the school to measure progress and impact, the measures must clearly align with the outcome. Interventions should also align with the outcome and should maintain the focus on pupils affected by poverty from P1 to S3. Interventions that impact on transitions between early years and primary and between the broad general education and senior fees can also be considered where these will support schools to close the poverty related attainment gap. When planning interventions and approaches, sustainability should be considered. How can impact beyond the term of the intervention be built in? Interventions can be thought about under the following themes. Leadership. This includes interventions that focus on school culture and ethos to address policies and practice that do not support equity and are not sufficiently focused on closing the poverty related attainment gap. Learning and teaching. Interventions such as a targeted approach to increasing attainment and numeracy. Families and communities. Interventions that involve direct work with families such as a family learning project to develop parental confidence and skills in supporting children with reading at home and to increase reading opportunities. Regardless of the related theme, schools must ensure interventions selected contribute to closing the poverty related attainment gap. Schools should consider which interventions will have the greatest impact. Resources such as the Interventions for Equity Framework from the National Improvement Hub and the Education Endowment Foundation's Teaching and Learning Toolkit, both pictured here, provide examples of successful evidence-based approaches to support schools when planning their own interventions. Parents, carers and pupils should be involved in the planning process, with schools ensuring that this is done in a way that is not stigmatising. Participatory budgeting is one mechanism that can be used to support this engagement. And further information about participatory budgeting is contained within the National Operational Guidance for PEF. Schools should also consider how other partners can support their work to close the poverty related attainment gap. The two documents pictured at the bottom of this slide are examples of support for schools in relation to working with partners and links to these documents can also be found in the National Operational Guidance along with guidance in relation to the recruitment of additional staff to support interventions and procurement. Thinking now about monitoring and measuring the impact of interventions, this slide provides some questions for schools to use in their discussions. It's important to consider not only whether or not improvement is evident, but also is the level of improvement sufficient? Where there are concerns about the rate of progress, or indeed a lack of progress, schools should consider whether or not this is due to issues with the intervention itself, or is down to issues in how the approach or intervention has been delivered. Staff and or pupil absence, prioritising other tasks over PEF interventions, and remit creep will all negatively affect the success of an intervention. Sometimes interventions can impact in ways not considered 
in the planning process, and schools should be alert to this. Unintended consequences can be positive, but they can also be negative. For example, a pupil attending one-to-one -one support for emotional regulation at the same time each week may be unhappy at repeatedly missing PE. Where an intervention is not delivering the required impact, schools should not be afraid to review the plan, adapt the intervention as appropriate, or even stop the intervention and take a different approach. We are now at the end of the webinar. Thank you for listening. If you would like further advice and guidance, please get in touch with the Education Scotland Attainment Advisor for your local authority area. If you're not already in contact with your Attainment Advisor, his or her details are available from your local authority lead for the Scottish Attainment Challenge. Your Attainment Advisor will be happy to provide further support.